Okay, this is Orlando Wilson. What I'm going to talk about in this video is something that happens in the close protection business quite often. And the people that get involved in it a lot of times get involved unwittingly. And that's working for criminals. Or being offered jobs by criminals or people with connections to criminals. Now, the main people that need protection in most places are criminals. Why? Because they're up to no good. They're getting threatened by their opposition. They're having issues with law enforcement. They've been watched. They've been followed. Other criminals want to rob them, attack them, steal whatever they've got, etc. So this is where criminals are the main market for close protection services because they need protection. If you're running a legitimate business, if you're running a licensed business, a lot of times, I would say most of the time, you don't want to get involved or end up working for criminals for multiple reasons. I'll touch on a few of them here. If you end up working for criminals, you can end up ruining your career. Or if nothing else, you end up getting a, a dirty mark on your name and nobody will touch you. Now, in one of my other videos, I touched on somebody I know um, that ended up in the US. The video is about uh, what if you've been watched and followed and if you think you're under surveillance. This guy was working on a detail for a wealthy person. Um, didn't know who the man was. He was put on there by, he was a license, he was fully licensed in the state of Florida. The people he was working for, a licensed ag agency, everything legitimate as far as he's concerned. He come off his shift. He's been watched and followed. Um, after that, to cut things short, they done a, They actually found out who the client was, checked him out, and the person was under, under indictment by the feds in the U.S., and he was an international scammer, big, big scammer. He was living big in the U.S. because he'd ripped people financially in Latin America for big money. So it's most probably safer for him to be in the U.S., being watched by the feds, than it was being outside the US, where he'd most probably get torn apart. The guy I knew come off that job. Um, the reason being, one, he didn't associate with criminals. He's a legitimate guy with a legitimate business. Um, and the other thing he was, he didn't like the fact that the client didn't tell him, well, the company that employed him didn't tell him the client had problems. Could a job like that be managed properly? to some extent but the issue is if you're working a detail like that where the the client that you've been put on is under indictment by the feds under under investigation by it doesn't have to be feds police um if they come to arrest that guy if you don't know that the people coming to arrest him are actually legitimate law enforcement and you get involved in a confrontation with leg legitimate law enforcement you're going to jail. The chances are the fact you're working for a known criminal anyway, or somebody that's up to no good, you're gonna be talked to, detained, interrogated, etc. to start with. So you're gonna have problems. My main concern would be what to do if people came to arrest him, because if I was running that job, I wouldn't want one of my guys getting involved in a shootout or getting involved in a shooting or any hostile in, uh, incident with police federales because their career is screwed. And me as a service provider, I'm going to have a lot of problems. I think you can kiss all your licenses goodbye for a long time. And you'll be investigated. I'm sure the tax people will be on you. Everybody will be on you. So again, could a job like that be managed? Be transparent with the people doing the job. And to be honest with you, if that landed on my desk, I would be very apprehensive. If the money was right and the client was okay, I might take it, but I'd be going, most probably contacting the authorities or the people that's most probably investigating the client, saying, I'm the one, I'm the service provider. If you need anything, here's my phone number. And if you intend to arrest him, please tell me. And I want to ensure my guys stand down 150%. Um, because again, there's a lot of liability there. And a lot of things could go wrong. Over the years, I provided, I'm especially in London, provided security for people. You didn't know who they were. It's how the circuit used to work. You get a call from somebody you know. 
yeah, there's a gig going on, you want to do it, sure, no worries, turn up, cash in hand. But I always carried a receipt book, and a lot of people did always carry receipt books, because again, if you pay cash in hand, you still give the person a receipt, and you declare all money's earned for your taxes, because you don't end up being uh, pulled for not paying your taxes. So always remember to pay your taxes, even if you're paid cash in hand. But even back then, um, you were dealing with trusted people, etc., and it was nothing shady. Would I move assets for somebody I didn't know? Definitely not. Would I help somebody escort assets who I didn't know and I didn't know what the assets were? 100% no. I used to get it, um, well, we get it occasionally now. I used to get it in the US when I was there, people asking for security. And my first question to everybody is, why do you need security? Generally, the people who need security have a problem. And I remember a few people saying, oh, we just got this going on, we just got that going on. Okay, cool. Show me over here. I need to know who you are, what you are, your address, your business, etc. Before I provide you with security, I need to know who you are. And some of the people were cagey. They didn't want to do it. They didn't want to, oh, we don't need that. It's just a, just a whatever, just a job. All right, you know what? Go somewhere else. Don't, I don't need the money because I don't need the hassle. You don't need to be providing security for somebody that's going to do a drug deal. You don't need to be providing security for somebody that's going to end up being arrested, as I said, by the feds, etc. So this is where you have to be very cautious who you provide services to. I remember when I first got to the U.S., I was offered um, I was offered some work for somebody. The person is very, very legitimate in his own world. He's very renowned. Um, you wouldn't know him if I mentioned the name. But I guarantee you would know his clients and who he loaned money to over the years. Very, very, uh, very, very powerful man in his circles. Very. 100% respectable, legitimate businessman. But how he got started, how he got his money and who he was associated to, um, there was a big, big question mark. Um, as I said, 100% respected businessman. But... I was very cautious, very cagey, and I said no, 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 because I was offered it several times. I trained members of his staff, but I didn't want to go any further than that. Why? Because I didn't want the black mark. Once you get associated with criminals, once you get that mark, once you're in that world, you're in that world. And what usually happens, to draw people in deeper, once you do one favor, once you do one thing which is questionable, they got you. They got the hook in. And then other things will start coming your way and you won't be able to say no because they already have dirt on you. They already have a mark on you. And once you go down that track, once you go down that trail, it doesn't matter how much money they're paying you. Um, generally, once you've done something naughty, that can always come back and bite you in the ass, literally. Um, you're not going to get rid of it. And the thing is with a lot of the unscrupulous criminals, once you've done one thing, they will use that leverage to make you do more things. So this is where you have to be extremely careful who you deal with. You have to be extremely careful who your clients are because you can end up in a lot of trouble. You can make some quick money. You can make good money. But again, you can also end up in a lot of trouble. You can end up going to jail. You can end up ruining your career, ruining your life for nothing. I've seen people get involved in things over the years and involved with people. Um, Somebody comes to mind, again, a London story, and everybody that knew him was scratching their heads. Why? But again, everybody wants to be a gangster, right? Not everybody. Anyway, in the meantime, we're throwing out, I'm throwing out a lot more of these videos and podcasts. Um, so follow us along on social media. Don't forget, I have an array of books online to do with various security topics, and there might be some new books coming out soon. Um, in the meantime, be good, stay safe and stay out of trouble and always know who you're dealing with. Be good, good boys and girls and don't go talking to strangers.